This year marks the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, and this week will also mark Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day, on April 15th and 16th. In conjunction, Elms College is featuring the New England premiere of the exhibit titled Forbidden Art, a photography exhibit of rare pieces done by Holocaust prisoners. Steve Kiltanik tells us more. Auschwitz was a notorious network of German Nazi concentration and extermination camps built and operated by the Third Reich in Poland during World War II. Polish political prisoners arrived in 1940. Extermination of prisoners first took place in September 1941. At least 1.1 million prisoners died at Auschwitz, which became a major site of the Nazis' final solution to the Jewish question. Tens of thousands of people of diverse nationalities also died in the gas chambers or of starvation, forced labor, diseases, and medical experiments. The camp was liberated by the Soviets on January 27, 1945. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the liberation. Since March, an exhibit called Forbidden Art has been on display at the Alumni Library at the Elms College. It features 20 high-quality photographs of extremely rare pieces of art created by prisoners at Auschwitz. This is the New England premiere of the exhibit, which was made possible by the Elms College Social Work Department and the Jewish Federation of Western Massachusetts. Other supporters include the Kosciuszko Foundation's New England chapter and the Polish Center of Discovery and Learning. The various pieces of art feature scenes documenting daily life in the camps, portraits of prisoners, and depictions of idealized life outside the camp. The collection offers a window into the hidden world of the inmates, and reveals how they escaped the horrors of their imprisonment. Maureen Holland is the director of the college's social work program. Part of the social work training that we give to our students is rooted in human oppression, which is one of the courses that we teach here at the college. So we try to help students understand the historic context, particularly focusing around the Holocaust. Holland said the artwork comes from two sources. There were people who had very few resources in the camps, but were able to pull out maybe a candy wrapper or a little piece of paper. They could find a pencil somewhere. And from the darkest, deepest, most horrible conditions, there's the desire to create, to communicate, and to share art. But they did it at tremendous personal cost. Some of the other pieces were under slightly different conditions where the artists actually worked. They worked in offices. They were already accomplished artists. This portrait is by Marian Ruzamski. He died of starvation but was able to pass his drawings to a fellow inmate before embarking on his death march. This wooden sculpture by female prisoner is called the Sorrowful Christ. Any wood could be used as raw material to sculpt, like this small sarcophagus, on which is carved the birth dates of the deceased, an attempt by the artist to maintain the dignity of death. This bracelet depicts scenes from the lodge ghetto. The artist probably died in the gas chamber after passing it on hidden in a mess kit. This watercolor was part of a gift album from the men in one camp to the women in another. It's filled with personal greetings and shows that despite the evil around them, the prisoners did not stop noticing each other's human needs. Some artists, like Stanislaw Tralka, maintained a sense of humor when he drew this caricature of Nazi SS men. He died of typhus in 1942. Another unknown author created a fairy book tale for his children about the adventures of a black chicken. The drawing behind me was taken from a sketchbook found on the grounds of Auschwitz in 1947. The artist is known simply by the initials MM. It's probably one of the more valued in the collection because it actually shows mass extermination of the Jews at Auschwitz. These are not retrospective paintings or sculpture of what people in the camps did 70 years ago. These are our primary documents and demonstrate not only the artistic talents of the inmates, but the resilience. By creating artwork, which is something of beauty, something of great grandeur of the human spirit, we are saying we will not give in. We will not be downtrodden. We will always have hope. Carolyn Topor is the president of the New England chapter of the Kosciuszko Foundation. 
It truly amazed me that these people had that courage and, the, and a fortitude to, to show their dignity and show that even in the face of death, they were going to survive in some way. Uh, maybe not physically, but psychologically while they were going through all these terrible tragedies. All the original 2000 art objects in the collection are permanently housed at the Auschwitz-Birkenau State Museum in Poland. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. Thank you.